Just another normal Sunday at a factory in Chamraj Pet. That is until a roaring fire broke out. Take a look. The silent parking lot of TR Mills in Chamraj Pet in Bengaluru was engulfed in flames today. Hundreds of people gathered as fire tenders attempted to douse the raging flames. The source was found to be a big stack of old tyres. The fire quickly spread to two parked buses nearby. Within minutes, the roaring fire and blowing smoke had caught the attention of many. Fire personnel were notified. Fire attendants and close to a hundred personnel arrived at the spot and attempted to bring the raging fire under control. No injuries have been reported in the fire mishap. Meanwhile, property worth lakhs has been destroyed. A quite gloomy Sunday for most of us turned into a big nightmare for some of the people here at the TR Mills yard in Chamraj Pet when news came in that two buses around uh, 4 p.m. had caught fire due to a bunch of tires that were placed uh, in the TR Mills yard. We do know that uh, there are still a lot of rescue personnel on location. There are still a lot of cops on location. There were nearly eight fire tenders that were rushed to the spot. In the distance, you can see that the tires are still burning and the fire tenders are still working hard at putting out the fire. Uh, in this particular area. Now, uh, what we do know about TR Mills is that this is a yard where most of the private buses are parked and uh, eight fire tenders were immediately pushed uh, into service uh, to save the two buses that had caught fire. Quite a dramatic uh, turn of events considering that there are over 50 buses parked in this particular yard. TR Mills is no, no longer functional, but uh, this particular yard is used by a lot of private bus service providers to make sure that they have parking lot for their buses. And uh, yes, now that uh, at around 7 p.m. that the fire has been brought under control on the buses, the tires are still working, still burning, and the fire tenders are still working to bring it under control. Hopefully in the next few minutes it will uh, be under control. But right now we can see that uh, rubber, as we've been told, uh, does not go out too soon, especially if rubber tires catch fire, it does not go out too soon. We can see a lot of cops on location being pressed into service, along with a lot of fire, uh, fire service agents here who have been uh, here since the last two to three hours trying to make sure that they bring in the fire completely into control. Uh, the buses that are kept right next to the fires caught, uh, right next to the tires rather, I beg your pardon, uh, caught fire and the fire has been doused out on the buses a while ago. We are also told that the rain probably helped to a great extent to bring down the fire. Quite a few of the sources here have very, very mixed information about what could have triggered off the fire considering it was a cold day. Now in summers, incidents like this where random fires take place are very common. But considering today it happened without uh, really having a trigger of sorts in terms of heat, it indeed, uh, we'll have to wait for further investigations to reveal what exactly caused this particular fire. With camera person Madan, this is Priya Jain for News 9. Well, with the plight of DLF buyers brought to the fore, another group of flat owners of Skyline Apartments have come forth accusing their builders of withholding their homes. Money laundering, demanding excess payments with no proof, usage of foul language and improper service. These are the allegations levelled against famous Skyline builders. Over a hundred distressed buyers of Skyline Beverly Park in Amrita Halli near Yalanka are still waiting for the possession of the flats which they reportedly purchased in 2006. The project, which offers about 250 apartments, was supposed to be completed in 2009. Many buyers claim to have already paid more than 90% of the payment since 2006. They have stated that the administration refuses to give clear-cut answers regarding when they can move into their dream homes. In my case, it was in 2007. 
and then it was to be delivered by 2010, including the grace period. Since then, till date, um, there is no indication of getting the possession. Even the completion part of it is also, according to the research assessment made by our professional, there are architects and all, jointly with this, you know, police people, they have made an on-spot assessment. They have assessed it as still 35% of the job is remaining. So, no hopes of, you know, sorting out in spite of all our best efforts. We all cooperated. We extended all kinds of help, what they asked from us. In spite of that, this is only dragging on and we are not getting any indication how to overcome this. The buyers have stated that despite their best efforts to cooperate with the builders, they've only been met with outright arrogance coupled with a lackadaisical attitude. Dozens of people have invested their life savings, taken loans worth lakhs and are spending thousands of rupees on rented homes close to Skyline Beverly Park in Amrita Halli. We saw a lot of arrogance and act of irresponsibility and uh, things like that from them. And I, I feel that, uh, you know, that whatever problem they have, all of us have come together to sort out that problem. And he is not, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the giving uh, years to this. And we have people like him. He has put his all his... He is from KPCL, uh, worked for a g government company, and he has put all his savings in this. And today, you know, he has no direct retirement funds, and the people have taken loan. They are repaying the loan with interest, and uh, they are paying rent apart from, uh, you know, paying, uh, you know, uh, booking this flat. So these are the things, you know, all our efforts to uh, cooperate, help has not yielded anything. Probably what intention they have, we are not able to assess. Another allegation levelled against Skyline is that the builders have asked the buyers to go ahead with flat registrations despite lacking the necessary statutory clearance. In a desperate attempt to get a civil response from Skyline builders, many have written letters to the administration and even the company's managing director, but to no avail. I want to ask him how can we register an apartment which is not complete, which doesn't have any of the statutory clearances. I have myself personally written three letters to the company, including to the managing director of the company who has signed my agreement. They have not even bothered to reply to my letter asking for copies of, in which I have asked for copies of the legal uh, and uh, statutory uh, compliances. Nothing has come. Now if we register this, how can I stay in this apartment? There is no water, there is no power connection, there is no sewage. So what is your demand now? Complete the apartment, as per, complete the project, complete the project as per the terms in our original agreement at the price in our original agreement. No excess payment and no deviations in the quality. The buyers claim that they have been asked to pay lakhs of rupees for electricity and water connections, but the builders have failed to justify what the money is for. Questions on the credibility of Skyline, who have now been accused of laundering the buyers' hard-earned money. Further, he has uh, climbed uh, in uh, the letters uh, deposit towards uh, utilities like electricity and water ranging from 6 lakh rupees to 8 lakh rupees. In my case, he has claimed 8 lakh rupees. And in fact, uh, this charges uh, is not more than 60, 70 thousand rupees, water and electricity deposit. And he is not giving the details about it. No, we are kept in dark and he is trying to prove that we are defaulters. Uh, in the, uh, in, in the uh, as per the agreement because we are not paid these amounts and things like that. So there is an uh, uh, attempt by him to make money in various ways uh, for this project, uh, showing this project. With the letters, pleas and complaints to the builders falling on deaf ears, they have registered a complaint with the Amrithali police. And that uh, you have registered a FIR at the Amrithali yes. police station as well. What is happening with that? Has there been any headway in terms of investigation or whether he has been called? Investigation must be going on, but uh, I don't think uh, there's any charge sheet, uh, charge sheet uh, filed as yet in the magistrate's court. We are awaiting that. And uh, they should make their own investigations and come to their conclusions. As far as I'm concerned, I invested in 2006 with the assurance and in the agreement that I'll get my apartment in 2009, I've paid all the installments on time, 90%. And uh, he doesn't seem to be going by the agreement uh, or the terms of the agreement. And sending us uh, intimidating, threatening letters and sometimes there's a verbal duel on telephones going on and uh, not becoming of uh, uh, a construction company of the standard. I mean, they've deteriorated to the extent that, um, you know, modesty doesn't permit me to talk about it anymore. The allegations against Skyline are many. 
but the builders have defended themselves saying that all of these are only partially true what the allegation has been made regarding delay and everything it is par uh, partially not true because most of the customers who have booked in our apartment they have booked it after 2009 2010 many of them have booked in 2013 also so this uh, delay what they claim is uh, not true in case of everybody okay. customers are liable to pay the bescom charges the bw ssb charges and also the vat and service tax uh, on which uh, they are asking for a rebate which uh, the management has not agreed for a rebate that's why some of the customers have formed a group and to reduce their uh, liability to for they are they are actually forcing us to reduce their liability that's why you know, all these protests and uh, this thing is going on skyline has responded by pointing fingers at the distressed buyers stating that the protests have an ulterior motive after a wait of almost 7 years by many all the buyers want now is the completion of the project so that they can move into their new homes hari shupadya news 9 bengaluru Now Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Nepal for a two-day visit to discuss bilateral issues between both the countries. Here's a report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Nepal today as part of his two-day visit. Modi was received by Nepal's Prime Minister Sushil Koirala at Tribhuvan International Airport and given a grand ceremonial welcome. Narendra Modi who was dressed in his usual trademark kurta was given a 19 gun salute by the Nepali army national anthems of India and Nepal were played by the band to mark the bilateral relation the route from airport to the hotel where Modi will stay saw a lineup of local people on both sides of the road Modi reunites his godson with family Modi's visit to Nepal has a personal agenda too. He took his godson Jeet Bahadur to Nepal to make him meet his family after over 16 years. Modi sponsored Jeet Bahadur, a Nepali migrant who Modi came across in 1998 in Gujarat. Adding a human touch to his Nepal visit, his son was reunited with his family. Later in the day, Prime Minister Modi, along with Ajit K. Doval, National Security Advisor and Sujata Singh, the Foreign Secretary, met Nepal's Foreign Minister Mahindra Bahadur Pandey. In the meeting, both countries discussed some bilateral issues, including hydropower, trade, energy, and security. Mahindra Bahadur Pandey was positive about the meeting. He felt the meeting was result-oriented. The talks were held in a very cordial and friendly atmosphere. We have to move hand in hand in development. Political and cultural issues also came up for discussion. He speaks less, but he is result oriented. During my meeting, I felt whatever he says, he believes in doing it. Modi addresses Nepal Parliament. Narendra Modi addressed the Nepal Parliament where he talked about the deep connection that both countries share. He even stated that both India and Nepal ties are older than Ganga and Himalayas. We have always believed that it is not our task to interfere in what you do but to support you in the path you decide to take. The respect that I have got is not for Narendra Modi or the Prime Minister of India. It is respect for the people of India. Our relations with Nepal are as old as the Himalayas and the Ganga. Being your neighbor and seeing our experience as a democracy, we feel happy at the direction in which you are going. During his two-day visit, he will further be discussing various bilateral issues and will also visit the famous Pashupatinath Temple. This visit of Indian Prime Minister in Nepal after 17 years also concerns around Chinese interference in the neighboring country. Will PM Modi's foreign visit bear any fruit? Only time will tell. The News Nine report.